This will be a demonstration of some of the new features provided in the UCCX 12.5 SU1 release. Specifically, we'll be covering agent device selection, multi-tab gadget, and specific license reservation. Let's have a look at the agent device selection first. I'll be using the dCloud CCX 12.5 SU1 demonstration environment for these demonstrations. And the steps and talking points for you to be able to demonstrate the same are provided in the demonstration guide for this demo. You can see here I've got the demonstration homepage up. And first, we'll go ahead and log into the Finesse Agent desktop. And I'll log in as Sandra Jefferson. And we now see the agent device selector showing up. This feature allows agents to select a preferred device while logging into their Finesse desktop. Administrators can enable or disable the agent device selection feature. But with this, agents now have the option to switch to the device based on where they are working, across shifts, in an office, moving from one office to another, across various locations, or working from home. The agent's primary and secondary extensions can be shared with multiple devices. And when an extension is shared with multiple devices, agents must ensure that they use the device that was selected while logging onto their Finesse agent desktop. In this case here, we'll go ahead and select Jabber and click on the Continue. And at this point, we're logged into our agent desktop using Jabber as our endpoint, since in this case, perhaps I was working from home. Clicking on the second tab, I'll go ahead and log into the UCCX administrator so I can show you how they can turn off or on this functionality within 12.5 SU1. We'll log in as the administrator. And under system and system parameters, you can see under the agent settings area, the agent device selection has been enabled within this UCCX system. Again, the administrator could enable or disable this and then go ahead and apply this based on their desire to use this functionality or not. And clicking onto this third tab and logging into the call manager console, and then clicking under device phones, and then searching for our agent's extension, which in this case would be 1080, I can see that indeed, Sandra Jefferson does have two devices registered under that one extension 1080. In this case, she has her Jabber for Windows registered, as well as a Cisco 8865 hard IP phone. So this is how Sandra was offered the option to select between these devices when she was logging into her Finesse Agent desktop. And as we go back onto the Finesse Agent desktop, if I were to log out Sandra, and then sign her back in. Again, she would be presented with the two options to select the device that is closest to her at this time. So if she was at her office, and this is where the Cisco 8865 would be, in this case, she would check that phone as the device that she would work with and click on continue. And again, just go ahead and continue her workday. Now, let's take a look at the multi-tab gadget. This release supports configuring multiple gadgets within a single gadget called a multi-tab gadget, as you can see right here. The multi-tab gadget allows rendering of multiple gadgets accessible through tabs in a single desktop view, and shortcut keys can be used to switch between the different gadget tabs easily so that information presented by each gadget can be accessed in a fast and convenient manner. With multi-tab gadget, you don't have to scroll down the page or navigate between desktop container tabs to see additional information. The gadget tabs are lined up horizontally on the multi-tab gadget header, enabling you to access information readily. And multiple instances of multi-tab gadgets are supported, which allows you to stack groups of gadgets to customize your desktop. In this case here, we've taken some of the agent reports that used to have their own tabs on the left-hand side and instead brought them in under a single multi-tab gadget when we click on the home icon here. Now let's take a look at how this is set up by looking at the Finesse administration. So again, click on admin links and Finesse admin and log in as the administrator. 
And since the layouts are applicable to teams, I would click on my team resource and then go into the team. In this case here, our agent Sandra Jefferson is a member of the Cumulus main team. So as I click on this and open it, I can see the configuration of her desktop layout and I'll just go ahead and click on expand all. And as I scroll down to the location where the agent layout is defined, we see here some of the gadgets that are typically displayed as page level gadgets. And by default with 12.5 SU1, the customer experience journey gadget is also provided here in case you wanted to uncomment that out. But we felt we would leave that commented. As we take a look into the agent role and then scroll down a little bit further, we can see the home container right here. Again, if we look on our agent desktop, it was when we were clicked onto the home tab right here that we see our multi-tab gadget. So I'll go ahead and blow this up so we can see it a little closer. So here we have the definition of our home tab gadget and we can see here that the new functionality is when we type in managed by and then give it a name and then use that same name for other gadgets as we see right here all of the individual gadgets that I add will be added here as a multi-tab gadget. And if I scroll down a little bit, we can see that the original gadgets for the default finesse layout have been commented out as we see right here so that we could demonstrate the multi-tab gadget. So normally they would have been a gadget for my statistics and another one for my history showing up right here on the left hand side of the agent desktop. But instead, using the multi-tab gadget functionality. We added those in right here because it made sense for us to go ahead and locate all of these reports in a single multi-tab gadget. So again, this is totally customizable on a team-by-team -team basis through the Cisco Finesse Administration page. And lastly, we'll take a look at specific license reservation. In this section, we'll be talking about the specific license reservation feature within the CCX 12.5 SU1 release. And I'll be showing you this through a dCloud demonstration. And this license reservation feature solves a problem if a customer cannot share license information with a Cisco SSM or smart software manager on a regular basis. And therefore, specific license reservation needs to be performed to enable those licenses. And a couple of notes before we get into the demonstration, you must have a smart license account of your own to go through this scenario. And that must have some demonstration licenses that you could apply to the CCX dCloud system. And also, be sure to go through all of the steps, including step nine, to remove license reservation from the demo system so that the same demonstration can be available for other demonstrators after you are done. As you can see here, I'm logged into my smart software licensing portal and logged into my virtual account and when I click on my licenses tab, I can see the licenses that I'll be using during this demonstration, the inbound ports, outbound ports, premium seat, and the server license, and how many ports and agents are associated with those licenses. And I can also see the license reservation button, which we'll get into shortly. Now, once we log on to the demonstration workstation within dCloud and open up our browser and go to the second tab, we can go through the admin links to log into the CCX admin and log in as administrator. And then we click on System, License Management, and you can see the registration status of registered currently. So I would then pull down the Actions pull down and click on Deregister, and then click on OK. And we can here see that our CCX system is indeed unregistered. And next, I click on the transport settings under the registration information area and select direct as the license communication method. And then I can click on the test connection button. And once it shows that it's successful, I'll click on save. And our transport settings are saved and confirmed. Per the demonstration guide, at this point, it is required that you open a case with dCloud support to prepare the demo for the next steps. So copy this information right here, and then open up your dCloud portal, and then click on support to go ahead and open up a case. If I scroll down, I can see here I can click on new ticket, 
can put in that information as the summary in my name, etc., and go ahead and click the submit. And you should do that at least a day in advance to make sure that there's ample time for the dCloud support team to go ahead and do what they need to do on the dCloud Smart License account to prepare it so that you can do this demonstration as well. And once you've submitted that case to the dCloud support and received the confirmation that they've done the work they needed to do, you can move on to step three in the demonstration guide by accessing Cisco Software Central and going to your Smart Software Licensing account and clicking on Inventory then pick the virtual account that you need to look at and then click on licenses. And you should have the licenses that you'll be using for this demonstration ready to go and we'll be using this license reservation button very shortly. Now go back on the remote desktop so you can quickly and easily get onto the CCX command line interface by clicking on M Remote NG and then double clicking on UCCX. And that will bring you right into the CCX CLI and log you right into the interface. And next, per the demonstration guide, you'll want to enter this command onto the CLI of the CCX system. And we can see here that the CLI is showing us that the license reservation has been enabled successfully. And you could go back onto the CCX administrator and go under System License Management. And you can see right here via the status indicator that license reservation has been enabled as well. And you just follow along with the demonstration guide by entering the commands and then copy the requested code and putting them into the specific location designated by the demonstration guide. So I'll just go through those steps here. So I issue the license smart reservation request. And then I highlight and copy this code. And then we return to the Smart Software Licensing page and click on License Reservation. And this is where you would right click and paste in that code that you just copied into your clipboard. And then scroll to the bottom and then click Next. And check the box next to Reserve a Specific License. And then go down to the specific licenses that you're looking to reserve in my case here is the CCX inbound ports, the outbound ports, and the premium seat for the 12.5 release. And I'll put in 100 of each of these, as well as the premium server license. And then click Next, and then the Generate Authorization Code button. And this gives you the authorization code that you want to copy onto your clipboard because you'll be putting this onto the CCX system shortly. And now we go back to the CCX CLI via the M Remote NG application on the demonstration workstation. And we type in the license smart reservation install command and put this authorization code in there with quotations around it on both ends. and then hit return and enter a Y and we can see here that it has provided the confirmation that the license reservation was installed successfully and it's telling us to reboot the system for these changes to take effect but we don't need to reboot the CCX for this specific demonstration and now if we go back to the CCX admin page and click the browser refresh Again, we can see that license reservation is enabled and that a quantity of these specific licenses have been reserved and provided for this specific CCX system, as we can see here. So those were the steps to get the reserved licenses set up on the CCX system. And in step eight of the guide, it shows you how to modify the reserved count here 
in case you want to demonstrate that, but I'll not go ahead and do that. And it's not mandatory to do that in the demonstration. But very quickly, if I went back over to my browser in the smart licensing area and close this, and then you would click on product instances, and type in CCX to find these via the search, and then use the action pull down to update the reserved licenses which would then generate another code that you would put onto the CCX system. And then the last thing to do, once you've demonstrated the license reservation functionality, is to remove the license reservations and set the system back to how it was before, so that dCloud support doesn't have to do additional steps after you do your demonstration. So we'll go back to the M Remote NG and type license smart reservation return and confirm this copy the reservation code to the clipboard, and then disable license smart reservation. And then we'll remove those reserved licenses. So let me show you how that's done. So again, back on our workstation and our CLI session on the CCX system, we'll type in license smart reservation return. And confirm this. And again, copy this code, and then type in license smart reservation disabled. And that's disable without a D at the end. And we could see here that the command was successful and license reservation has been disabled off of this CCX system. Now we return back to our virtual account on our own browser. And under the product instances, for the one with the reserved licenses, click on Actions, and then click on Remove. And then I would paste in the code that I had copied onto my clipboard from the CCX system. And then click on Remove Product Instance. And we can see here that the product instance was removed successfully. And if we go back to our workstation on the CCX admin and hit the refresh, you can see that license reservation has been disabled on the system and that this CCX system has been transitioned back to the unregistered state. Well, hopefully that gave you a good solid understanding of how to demonstrate the latest enhancements in the 12.5 SU1 release as we saw agent device selection, the multi-tab gadget, and specific license reservation. Thank you.